Terrence Crawford continues to pursue a lucrative showdown with Canelo Alvarez, garnering predictions from pros for this highly anticipated fantasy match. Notably, Eddie Hearn and other professionals express concerns about Crawford's ability to handle the weight disparity. Well, yeah, I mean, he would never come below 168, so it would have to be at 168. I don't think Crawford would go to 168, and I don't think he could compete with Canelo. You've got to remember, Canelo's going to come in the ring at 180. Like... You know, so it would be a mismatch of sides. As good as Terence Crawford is, I, I couldn't one see it happening or two in winning that fight. Eddie Hearn recently shared his insights on the potential clash between Terence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez, offering a detailed assessment of the challenges Crawford may encounter against the larger Alvarez. Speaking about Crawford's pursuit of an intense fight with Alvarez, Hearn acknowledged the strategic move made by the Nebraska fighter, recognizing his ambition and desire to secure high-profile bouts. Terence Crawford is a phenomenal talent, both in and out of the ring, Hearn remarked, highlighting Crawford's strategic decision-making in his career trajectory. However, Hearn didn't shy away from addressing the significant size difference between Crawford and Alvarez, a factor that could profoundly impact the dynamics of their potential matchup. There's no denying Crawford's skill and ability, but he'll be facing a considerable size disadvantage against Canelo, Hearn emphasized, highlighting the physical challenges Crawford might face against the larger Alvarez. Acknowledging the formidable challenge that Canelo poses, Hearn remarked, facing someone like Alvarez is a whole different ballgame. Even this version of Canelo we've seen does seem to be yeah, slowing down a bit. Yeah, it's a huge, you know, I mean, you saw it with Dimitri Bivol. You saw, a, you know, a, not a small 168, but an average size 168 go up to 175. And I know skill was played a part there as well, but too, too big for Terence Crawford. Hearn also pointed out Alvarez's reluctance to compete below the 168-pound limit, which further complicates the situation for Crawford. Alvarez has shown a preference for fighting at higher weights, and even if Crawford were to move up, he'd still be at a size disadvantage, Hearn noted, highlighting the potential hurdles Crawford would face in adjusting to a higher weight class. Despite his reservations, Hearn commended both Crawford and Alvarez as exceptional talents in the sport. There's no denying the greatness of both fighters, but if I were to make a prediction, I'd have to lean towards Alvarez, Hearn stated, citing Alvarez's proven track record and the challenges Crawford would face in overcoming the size differential. Hearn's remarks provide valuable insights into the complexities surrounding a potential matchup between Terence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez. While Crawford's ambition and skill are undeniable, the size differential, and Alvarez's proven pedigree present significant obstacles for him to overcome in securing a victory against the Mexican superstar. Meanwhile, Bob Arum and Oscar De La Hoya recently shared their perspective Perspectives on the matchup between Terence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez, shedding light on the daunting challenge of facing someone of Canelo's caliber. I saw a tremendously talented guy uh, who was a baby, uh, and uh, he had aligned himself with good people like Antonio Leonard and James Prince, and he has all the talent in the world, and now he's been able to demonstrate that talent. Are you are you going to try to make Terence Crawford Canelo or no no you're not no. interested in that fight I'm not a question I'm not interested if I it'll do very well and so forth but as I understand it PBC has uh, a three fight deal with Canelo right and so you know you don't want to. I'm going to be 92 I mean how much longer can I do Aram known for his astute observations and vast experience in promoting top tier boxing events expressed his admiration for Crawford while acknowledging the distinct level of skill possessed by Canelo Bob Aram said Terence Crawford is undoubtedly one of the most talented fighters in the world however facing Canelo Alvarez is not just about the money it's about stepping into the ring with a true legend of the sport however Aram didn't mince words when addressing the formidable challenge posed by Canelo. Canelo Alvarez is in a league of his own. While Terence Crawford's skills are undeniable, Canelo Alvarez presents a unique challenge that few fighters can match. It's not just about talent, it's about the ability to adapt to different styles and overcome adversity in the ring, Aram stated, highlighting Canelo's exceptional skill set and track record of dominating the competition. Despite recognizing the financial incentives involved in a potential Crawford versus Canelo matchup, Aram emphasized the daunting task of challenging Canelo and the limited options available for potential opponents. Facing Canelo is not just about the money, it's about stepping into the ring with a true legend of the sport, Aram emphasized, underscoring the magnitude of the challenge that Crawford would face in a showdown against Canelo. Echoing similar sentiments, Oscar De La Hoya, another prominent figure in boxing promotion, concurred with Aram's assessment of the matchup. Terence Crawford is an exceptional fighter, but Canelo Alvarez is on another level. Canelo's combination of size, power, and skill make him a truly formidable opponent 
it, De La Hoya remarked, echoing Arum's sentiments about Canelo's unmatched skill and prowess in the ring. De La Hoya also emphasized the size and power advantage that Canelo possesses, which could pose a significant challenge for Crawford. Again, I'm gonna say this um, again, that it's up to Canelo. He picks his opponents, he, you know, and I think that if Munguia, imagine Munguia knocking out John Ryder, who went the distance with Canelo. I mean, that's a pretty good statement there. So, you know, yeah, and in a small ring like this, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, and, and look, I think, I think it'll be a huge mega fight. I really do. I think, I think that Canelo Munguia would be huge. But first thing is first, Ryder. you know, first Ryder, and then, and then Canelo has to decide. He holds all the cards, and we respect that. Reflecting on Aram's perspective, De La Hoya concurred that Canelo's size and power present a formidable challenge for Crawford. Canelo's track record speaks for itself, and facing him would be a significant test for any boxer, including Crawford, De La Hoya stated, highlighting the uphill battle that Crawford would face in attempting to defeat Canelo. In envisioning the potential matchup, both Aram and De La Hoya foresaw a stylistically one-sided affair, with Canelo gradually asserting dominance as the fight progressed. I can see Canelo imposing his will on Crawford, Aram remarked envisioning a scenario where Canelo's relentless attacks and power overwhelm Crawford over the course of the fight. De La Hoya echoed similar sentiments, predicting a tough battle for Crawford as Canelo's superiority became increasingly apparent. What do you make of that matchup if David Benavides fights Canelo? I've always been a Benavides fan. I think he's a very good fighter. Uh, and uh, uh, Canelo hasn't been as good lately as he was before. So I think that would be a very competitive match. Now, whether economically so forth it makes any sense, that's up to the fighters, neither of whom uh, uh, I promote. But certainly it would be an interesting match to see. The remarks from both Bob Arum and Oscar De La Hoya offer valuable insights into the challenges and dynamics of a potential matchup between Terence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez. While Crawford is undoubtedly skilled in his craft, both promoters emphasize the formidable nature of Canelo's size, power, and skill, making him a daunting opponent for anyone in the boxing world. Terence Crawford doesn't seem phased by the prospect of moving up several weight classes, repeatedly referencing Canelo in discussions. Some find this perspective unusual, considering the significant weight gain required approximately 20 pounds. However, many view the potential matchup with Canelo as the ultimate money-making opportunity and the most logical move for Crawford. Suggestions of a catch weight of around 160 pounds have been floated, with Crawford expressing reluctance to go beyond 154. David Benavidez criticizes Canelo's current divisional choices, labeling it a circus. He said, Canelo's divisional hopping is turning boxing into a circus. It's ridiculous to see him constantly fighting opponents much smaller in weight, moving from 154 to 147 to 160 may boost Canelo's legacy in terms of titles, but it's tarnishing the integrity of the sport. David believes Canelo's attempts to fight opponents much smaller in weight, from 154 to 147 to 160, are absurd and detrimental to the sport. Crawford uh, throwing his hat in to want to fight Canelo at 168. I mean, everybody wants to fight Canelo. It's a money, it's a money fight, you know what I mean? It, um, I think even Inouye would come up to fight Canelo. Canelo wanted to fight him. I mean, I don't want to see Crawford to fight uh, Canelo, to be honest with you, but... Uh, it would be. I'm not saying it wouldn't be a great fight. It would be a great fight, but I just I feel like if I I deserve my opportunity, and I'm gonna and after this fight, what else are they gonna say? You know what I mean? This is a tough fight. You know, the, the top uh, the top WB the top people ranked at the WC are fighting each other. So I mean, it, it shouldn't be it should be an easy call. If I can't get those fights, and I'll go up, I'll go up to fight Bivol, or I'll go try to you know I set my conquest on 175. Like I said, I don't want no handouts either. I want to you know earn my spots everywhere I go, even at 175. But you know I see that. Uh, I see that weight class, you know, I could, I want to become champion at 175, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. While acknowledging Crawford's skills and intelligence, Benavidez Sr. doubts his chances against significantly larger opponents, comparing it to the Charlo versus Canelo bout, where size proved decisive. He added, Canelo should focus on facing opponents closer to his natural weight class instead of cherry-picking smaller fighters for easy wins. Furthermore, David Benavidez is adamant about not wanting Terence Crawford to face Canelo before he does. He emphasizes that everyone desires to fight Canelo 
Canelo due to the financial rewards it offers, even suggesting that fighters like Nyoya Inoue might consider moving up to face him. David said, As for Crawford, he's undeniably skilled, but he needs to be realistic about his chances against significantly larger opponents. Just look at the Charlo versus Canelo fight. Size matters in boxing, and Crawford would face similar challenges against bigger foes. Despite acknowledging the potential for a compelling matchup between Crawford and Canelo, Benavidez feels he deserves his chance against Canelo after his upcoming fight against Demetrius Andrade. He anticipates objections based on deserving the opportunity, but asserts that he's not the sole authority to dictate Canelo's next opponent. Benavidez suggests that if Crawford fighting Canelo is beneficial for boxing, it should happen, as fans worldwide eagerly anticipate such a showdown. He also hints at the threat posed by rising star Jaron Boots Ennis implying that Canelo should face Crawford while still at the peak of his relevance, before potentially facing tough competition from Ennis. On the other hand, Bernard Hopkins voices his concerns regarding Terence Crawford's decision, questioning its wisdom. He emphasizes Crawford's well-being, asking what benefit the fight with Canelo holds for him. He said, I have serious reservations about Crawford's decision to pursue this fight with Canelo. It's a risky move, and I question the wisdom behind it. As someone who's been in the ring and understands the physical toll it takes, I worry about Crawford's well-being in a matchup against someone like Canelo. What benefit does this fight hold for Crawford? There are plenty of other viable matchups available that don't carry the same level of risk. Hopkins believes there are numerous other viable and less risky matchups available. He notes the inherent dangers of facing opponents much larger in weight. Does he win? Can he beat him? Can he can he beat Canelo? Does he does is his skill so much that he's able to bridge the weight he, classes? He has a legitimate chance. Over 60% for far as my if you say Bernard, give me a number. Uh, give me a number. He has an 85 plus ch chance to beat Canelo. Why? He's not going in there to prove something which will fall into Canelo's hand. He would love for him to prove something. That means you will stay there and try to prove something. But to go in there and to let him know, establish that from the first round, yeah. that I belong without showing that I am tough. I earned my position to be here. And I want to show you, even though you're being stubborn, that your time not only has came, but it's gone. He ain't going to surrender and say, I slowed up, so I'm going to act like it. No, he has to be shown. And it has to be early. Referring to the shifting landscape of boxing, Hopkins observes that fighters, originally from lower weight classes like 154 pounds, are now aiming to challenge Canelo, who competes in much higher weight classes. He added, The landscape of boxing is evolving, with fighters from lower weight classes now aiming to challenge Canelo in much higher weight divisions. It's a testament to Canelo's dominance, but it also raises concerns about the disparity in size. Canelo's ability to compete even in cruiserweight poses a significant challenge to smaller opponents like Crawford. It's a dangerous proposition, and Crawford should carefully weigh his options before committing to such a matchup. Hopkins highlights the disparity in size and the potential risks involved in such matchups, where Canelo, with his ability to contend even in cruiserweight, poses a significant challenge to smaller opponents. Andre Ward expresses doubts about Canelo's ability to compete effectively against someone like Crawford in that weight class. He said, Crawford's ability to switch stances seamlessly and confuse opponents makes him a unique threat in the ring. Personally, Ward is not fond of the idea, but acknowledges Crawford's pound-for-pound -pound status and skill. While there's potential for Crawford to utilize his power or enhance it and possibly outbox Canelo, Ward feels Canelo's preparation for fights, such as sparring with cruiserweights, demonstrates his size advantage. Ward expressed, Canelo's body attack and ability to walk down opponents could nullify Crawford's movement and counterpunching. Crawford's ring IQ and ability to make in-fight adjustments could give him an edge against Canelo's power. One concern about Crawford is his tendency to engage in exchanges, which might not bode well against Canelo's power. While Crawford could attempt to outbox Canelo, focusing on making his move, his defensive capabilities are questioned, with his defensive strategy mainly revolving around switching to a southpaw stance. According to Ward, Canelo's experience against top-level competition could give him the mental edge in a high-pressure fight against Crawford. In a potential matchup, Crawford would need to utilize his jab effectively and keep Canelo at bay to avoid getting overwhelmed by his power. Meanwhile, Floyd Mayweather thinks that Canelo should be pitted against a fighter like Benavidez instead. If it were up to me, we'd want to see Benavidez face Canelo. It's time for Canelo to stop cherry-picking opponents and take on a real threat like Benavidez, Mayweather expresses. He added, Benavidez is a hungry lion, and Canelo needs to 
step up to face him if he wants to prove he's truly the best. I respect Canelo's accomplishments, but dodging Benavidez only raises questions about his willingness to take on real challenges. While acknowledging Canelo's impressive skills, Mayweather personally believes that he's avoiding Benavidez. That's just my take, and I'm entitled to voice it, Mayweather asserts. The desire is clear. Fans want to witness Benavidez versus Canelo. Now it's time to make it happen. Mayweather said, fans deserve to see the best fight the best. And right now, that means Benavidez stepping into the ring with Canelo. There's no denying Benavidez's talent and hunger. If Canelo wants to silence the doubters, he needs to face him. Karen Davis believes that Terrence Crawford would face significant challenges in taking on someone of Canelo's caliber. After watching both performances, you know, him versus Spence and then Canelo versus Charlo, and you've been in the ring with Canelo, what does that fight look like? Well, I've been in the ring with, uh, Crawford too. Oh shit! You, I, I didn't know you sparred. I, I got Crawford ready for when he fought Sean Porter. Okay. Um, I've been for a few weeks. Um, I, what do I think of that fight? Yeah. I think that uh, you know everybody knows that Crawford got the skills. I do think that Canelo's a little big, a little big for Crawford. And it'll be a tall task for him to win. It'll be a lot. You have to. Um, it'll be a lot to to get that victory based on, you know, size alone. Reflecting on his own experience sparring with Crawford in preparation for his fight against Sean Porter, Davis shares his perspective. He said, Having sparred with Terrence Crawford myself, I can attest to his exceptional skills and ring IQ. But let's be real here. Facing someone like Canelo Alvarez is a whole different ballgame. While acknowledging Crawford's undeniable skills, Davis feels that Canelo's size advantage presents a formidable obstacle for Crawford to overcome. Size matters in boxing, and Canelo's got plenty of it. It's not just about skill, it's about physicality too, he added. Davis Davis emphasizes that, while size doesn't determine the outcome of fights, Canelo's combination of size and skill would make it difficult for Crawford to secure a victory. He said, while Crawford is no stranger to overcoming odds, Canelo's size advantage could prove to be a significant hurdle. I'm not saying Crawford doesn't stand a chance, but if I were a betting man, my money would be on Canelo. Although Davis doesn't rule out the possibility entirely, if he were to place a bet, he would favor Canelo Alvarez to emerge victorious in such a matchup. When it comes to a bout between Crawford and Canelo, it's clear to many that Canelo Canelo would easily overpower Crawford. Apart from Crawford's notable boxing IQ and skills, there's little else to suggest he could defeat Canelo. Many people believe they can achieve something until they actually face the challenge firsthand. Therefore, Crawford might be better off concentrating on the 154 division initially, assessing his performance, and then gradually moving up to 160 and 168 if he desires. So you said 68, but you, you mean 54, right? No, 68. You want to go up to 68. So, yeah. so who would you fight at 68? Canelo? If he, well, yeah, if he win or wow. Charlo, the winner. Wow, I that, wanna, that would be crazy. I want to be three time undisputed. So Canelo. your goal was to go up and become undisputed in three different there weight you classes. Go. There Ooh. you go. Wow, something that never been done before. Right. I always say, man, that's a big step. That's a big step, but for a person to go up three weight classes from 147 to 168 in the win yeah and become undisputed wow what can they say they what can't can say, they say they can't say nothing right now but what can they say what would they say though they three time say, yeah. undisputed champion and the and the smaller fighter that went up three weight divisions to conquer one of the the baddest mans Jumping up in weight classes abruptly doesn't seem ideal. If Crawford is walking around at 180 pounds, it's unlikely he'll compete at that weight. It's important to acknowledge the challenges of gaining weight healthily and being conditioned to compete at a higher level. Canelo, on the other hand, is already formidable at his weight class and adjusts his weight effectively for fights. Canelo Alvarez seems to be considering a potential bout against Terence Crawford in early 2024. Crawford is one of three potential opponents lined up for a fight around that time. Crawford, being the top Top contender has expressed his willingness to face anyone in the boxing world. Terence Crawford said, I'm ready for whoever they put in front of me. If Canelo wants to step into the ring, I'm here to make it happen. Alvarez acknowledges the uncertainty in boxing, but remains open to the possibility of facing Crawford. Canelo added, Facing Crawford could be an interesting challenge. I'm always looking for new opponents and new challenges. However, 
Despite the exciting prospect of a Canelo vs. Crawford showdown, indications hint that this fight may not come to fruition. While it's an enticing idea, it appears more like wishful thinking at this point. Crawford emphasized, I'm hopeful that the fight with Canelo will materialize, but I understand the complexities of making these matchups happen. Canelo has previously dismissed the notion of facing Crawford as an opponent, especially now that Crawford is considered the welterweight champion. Canelo added, Crawford is a talented fighter, but I have other priorities right now, maybe in the future. Let's delve into this possibility further. Following David Benavidez's victory over Demetrius Andrid, the boxing community eagerly awaits a potential showdown between Canelo and Benavidez. However, Canelo has a track record of finding reasons to avoid facing tough opponents, often citing excuses. Talking about it, Canelo said, I have to consider all my options carefully. Every fight has its own challenges. It appears he might be inclined to fight Terence Crawford instead of fulfilling a mandatory bout against David Benavidez. And I can't I can go down anymore. But, uh, you know, like he say, you know, when they ask him for the Germonta fight, they don't want to get credit for that fight. It's the same for me. I don't, I don't need to take that fight because everybody's going to say, it's too small, it's too small, it's too small. And then, you know, he, he needs to enjoy his fight. Okay, he deserves it. He deserves it. I, I like Spence, but, uh, you know, I like Spence and all the respect for him and everything, but I knew. I knew. I think it's... Uh, the 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 type of type of fight uh, Terrence Crawford is is fighter is 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 is, is different. Uh, when 68, but uh, like I say, like he say, uh, nobody's gonna give me credit for right, that. Thank you very much. There's widespread speculation about whether David is on par with Canelo's level to be his final opponent in his current three-fight deal, especially if he continues to secure victories and gain recognition. This could potentially lead to a match against Canelo. Multiple reports, including one from Blue Blood Sports TV, suggest that Canelo Alvarez is considering Terence Crawford as a potential opponent for an upcoming fight scheduled for early next year. This revelation significantly alters the the boxing landscape, particularly given the stature of both fighters in the sport. Canelo Alvarez, a four-division world champion and the undisputed super middleweight world champion, is widely recognized as one of the most prominent figures in boxing. With a record of 60 wins, two losses, two draws, and 39 wins by knockout, Alvarez's dominance in the ring is unquestionable. You never know. You never know in boxing. Absolutely. I'll go up, up and down and fight everybody out there. So... It's possible. Why not? It's possible. At 33 years old, standing 5 feet 8 inches tall with a reach of 70 inches, he presents a formidable challenge for any opponent. On the other hand, Terence Bud Crawford, an undefeated three-division world champion, is acclaimed as the top pound-for-pound -pound fighter globally. Crawford boasts an impressive undefeated record of 40 wins, no losses, and no draws, with 31 victories by knockout. At 36 years old, Crawford matches Alvarez in height and surpasses him with a reach of 74 inches. Now, Canelo Alvarez has decided to seriously consider the prospect of fighting Terence Crawford, according to a report from Blue Blood Sports TV. Canelo has narrowed down his options for his next fight, speculated to be scheduled for the Cinco de Mayo weekend. Salvador Rodriguez of ESPN MX reported Canelo's consideration of Munguia and Benavidez for his two fights next year to complete his three-fight deal with Showtime. Munguia has been vying for a fight with Canelo for years, but his chances have seemingly been disregarded due to his poor opposition and lackluster performances in his recent fights. It wouldn't have been fair or competitive. Rodriguez, Canelo's consideration of Munguia and Benavidez reflects the complexity of matchmaking and boxing. Munguia's long-standing desire for a fight with Canelo contrasts with his recent performances, raising questions about the competitiveness of such a matchup. Even if Canelo had faced Munguia within the past decade, it still wouldn't have been a fair matchup talent-wise. Munguia isn't on the same level as Canelo, so it might be more appropriate for Munguia to prove himself against someone like David Morrell Jr. before being matched up against Canelo. This way, the boxing audience wouldn't feel entirely short changed when purchasing the Canelo Mungia fight on Showtime pay-per-view. According to Rodriguez, while Canelo's choices may prioritize business interests, fans are eager for matchups that elevate the sport and showcase elite talent. The dynamics of Canelo's remaining fights under the Showtime contract underscore the importance of strategic planning in boxing promotion. Certainly, a fight between Canelo and Mungia would serve as a business move to generate revenue for Canelo. Facing Mungia appears to be a favorable prospect as it could potentially be an easy bout for the Mexican undisputed champion. Because I believe Canelo is going to fight Charlo again. Hey, Canelo's going to walk right through him and hopefully it can set up an all-Mexican showdown for September. And Benavides deserves a world title opportunity. He's been waiting in line for I don't know 
how long? Right now, Canelo Alvarez is the king. And the king has to decide. Benavides, who I respect a lot, incredible, incredible talent. He's been the mandatory for Canelo for almost two years, I believe. So it's all politics. And and things have to change. Because I come from a I come from an era, so is so does Hopkins, where you fight everybody. You fight the best, you fight whoever you fight, you have to fight. You know, and so it has to stop. If Crawford isn't available in May, Mungia seems like the perfect opponent for Canelo's first fight of the year. Canelo already had his first fight under the Showtime contract against Jermal Charlo in September, leaving him with two bouts remaining against the 27-year-old Mungia and Benavidez. In the words of Canelo, I'm committed to fulfilling my contractual obligations while pursuing meaningful matchups. I'm focused on delivering exciting fights for the fans, regardless of the platform. Even though Showtime intends to stop airing boxing events after 2023, they still have two remaining pay-per-view fights left on their contract with Canelo that they need to fulfill next year before the contract ends. However, fans would prefer Canelo to fight Crawford rather than Munguia, given Munguia's lack of notable opponents. First of all, I rate that he's ready. He's more than ready. I've seen poise, I've seen patience, but i also seen somebody that overcame, you know, some rounds where it was a give and take and he didn't succumb to, to you know, the relentless and the toughness of, of his opponent. When you close this show in that type of fashion, you know as a fan or a boxing expert that this is another level of, 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 of thinking, talent, and competition. Going forward, this is a statement. A statement of what? A statement that he's ready for anyone at 168 pounds. Canelo had challenges with this individual. Uh -huh. And Canelo didn't come out of there like he was going to do modeling the next day. He's pretty bruised up if you remember that fight. Mungia is scheduled to face super middleweight contender John Ryder in January, a bout he must win before progressing to his much-anticipated fight against Canelo in May. Some argue that Canelo must be exceptionally eager, or perhaps in a desperate position, to consider facing Mungia next, especially given Canelo's previous lack of interest in fighting him. In a recent interview, Mungia said, I understand the skepticism surrounding my recent performances, but I'm determined to prove myself as a worthy opponent. A bout against Canelo would be the ultimate test of my skills, and a chance to showcase my capabilities on the grandest stage. It's worth noting that Mungia has mostly faced opponents of average caliber throughout his entire 10-year professional career. However, the potential showdown between Canelo Alvarez and Terence Crawford has ignited immense excitement within the boxing community. This anticipation stems not only from the spectacle of the matchup, but also from the significant impact it could have on the legacies and rankings of both fighters. Terence Crawford, currently undefeated and widely recognized as one of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters, adds an extra layer of intrigue to the potential bout. Everybody keeps bringing up Canelo. I, I think that's weird, you know, because you'd have to gain like, what, 20 pounds? Yeah. But they, they say that's the money fight. That's the right. mega fight. That's the money fight. That's the only thing that makes sense for Terrence Croft. Well, you know what I mean? Catch weight. We, mm -hmm. can, we can do something out of catch weight. What weight you think? Probably like 160 or something. Because you, well, you, you said 154 is the highest you want to go. Yeah, 158. Mm -hmm. 160, that'd be cool. This matchup presents an opportunity for a fighter to step up in weight class and challenge one of the sport's most dominant figures. Securing a victory over Canelo would be a monumental achievement, adding to their already impressive career and potentially propelling them to a higher status in the boxing hierarchy. Crawford said, Facing Canelo Alvarez is the type of challenge every fighter dreams of, and I'm eager to test my skills against the best. Stepping up in weight to take on Canelo is a bold move, but I'm confident in my abilities and ready to prove myself on the biggest stage. For Canelo Alvarez, a four-division world champion and a dominant figure in the super middleweight division, defeating Crawford would enhance his status as one of the sport's all-time greats. It would demonstrate his versatility and skill, proving his ability to triumph over elite opponents across a wide range of weight classes, spanning from 147 to 168 pounds. Hey gave a little prediction on the fight, talked about Harold has a metal shield and you have a glass shield. Talk about the punches. This is what do you think it takes success with that? Could uh could he get it in the future? I mean you came up from 35, right? He ain't fighting no he ain't fighting no no real guys at, at 47. Everyone's talking about Errol fighting the winner of Canelo and Jamel. 
Could you ever do that? Is that too much weight? Or? What? Why 68? Yeah. I going up there. Right. So you got Canelo winning then, right? Then definitely. If he fighting like 168, definitely. Additionally, it could potentially lead to Canelo becoming undisputed in the process. The anticipation for this fight among fans is significant. It's not merely a clash between two exceptional fighters. It represents a collision of distinct styles and strengths that holds the potential to become a classic match. Yet, the complex landscape of boxing politics and logistical challenges pose significant obstacles to materializing this fight. The engagement of different promotions and networks frequently complicates negotiations for top-tier matches. Moreover, Crawford's contractual commitments including a possible rematch with Errol Spence Jr., add another level of complexity to scheduling this bout. These factors may potentially delay or even hinder the fight from happening, much to the dismay of boxing enthusiasts. Unfortunately, Canelo's team might lean towards more feasible matchups given the intricacies associated with arranging a fight with Crawford. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.